Hello, this is going to be a video on how to connect R to ChatGPT. All right. In order to make that connection, you'll have to use the ChatGPT API. And to do that, uh, you'll have to first go into go to openai.com. If you haven't done so already, uh, set up a login. So if you click on login, you know, you you go through, you put in your information. Uh, once you log in, uh, you'll click on API, and then you go down here to under User API Keys, and you could click on Create New Secret Key. You could name your key, and what it's going to do is it's going to generate uh, an API key for you, and it's going to show it to you. You could copy it, you know, paste it somewhere. Um, you can't retrieve your your key. Um, after it's been, uh, after it shows it to you, after you click out of it, um, so basically, if you lose your 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 key, you could always delete delete that that key and uh, create a new one. All right. So, uh, and I forgot to mention that um, OpenAI does offer when when you sign up, you get five about five days and five dollars credit um, to use the API for free uh, so um, yeah once you sign up you get I only used up up like 20 or 30 cents of the five dollar credit but it did expire after after around five days all right so let's go into R so the package we're going to be using today is the open air all right so you could install it by install.packages right the open air I already have it installed on my machine so we'll go here we'll call the library and then you have to use the open AI underscore API underscore key function and here's where you're gonna put in uh, the API key that you get from the website all right so we're gonna go ahead and run that line 5 you see no errors, so we're now connected uh, to ChatGPT uh, through the API. All right, and we can immediately start <coughs> asking uh, asking it questions. So we'll start off very simple. Uh, use the chat function. All right, so it's going to tell you here what what um, arguments you could do, but all, literally you could just say here. Uh, history, we'll, we'll ask it, history of our programming language. You're going to notice that the API does take a little longer than, uh, than the website. All right, there we go. So you're going to see in the console it's going to give you information about the history of, of R, uh, you know, who created it, and uh, how long it, you know, or I guess uh, more information about it. Uh, so that's if you want it to just go to the console. What you can do as well is you can um, you could save it to a variable. We call it a variable R history. And then we'll copy this. And then you just say message. So we'll make it the argument, make it a little more organized. And then we could say output. Uh, in this case, we could say here um, response. object all right so we're running that again and this time we're saving it as a variable or is that we're, we're calling it our history but it's gonna save as a list all 
All right, so you're going to see here, it's going to say R. It's a list. So you're going to see some information here. All right, so if we want to get that uh, actual message, that output, if you want to get to it, you would basically just go here. You'd say R history. And then uh, choices, message, content, and here is your output. All right, you don't have to do the response response object. You could also say here, uh, say we'll call it a a love letter, right? So. First one, the first question we or um, we asked it was to give us information about the history of our programming language. Uh, we could also have it write a love letter, for example. So, so we'll go here and we'll say chat message, and we'll say here write my wife a ten-year anniversary love letter right and we'll say output we'll leave that one blank all right so it's running thinking All right and it looks like it the value was a null but it did it did actually create the the 10 year anniversary love letter so if we try it again we could say here We'll try this output message. And see if this one will not show up as empty. All right, so now you see by just putting the output equal to message, it now the variable showed up as just the long string. So we could say print. We'll actually do it up here. Say print love letter. All right, and you can see here, you go ahead and it prints the whole letter for you. All right, so um, another great thing about um, using the API is you can interact with ChatGPT, so you could ask it follow-up questions. So we could say here, chat, uh, who won the first world world cup question mark all right so it looks like in 1930 uruguay uh won the world cup defeating argentina and then we could say here chat who got Third place. All 
All right, so here you can see here it shows that United States secured third place. All right, they beat, they defeated Yugoslavia six to one. And uh, we could fact check, fact check it, and you can see the United States did come in third. All right, so one thing, you know, you could interact with it, uh, you know, uh, quite a bit. But let's just say if you, you could always, you could always, uh, if you want to clear the chat, you could just uh, do the function clear underscore chat log. Uh, nothing in the parentheses. So you're basically, you're clearing out that chat log. So now if we asked... you know, uh, who got third place, um, it's not going to be able to answer us, right? Now it says, I'm sorry, I don't have enough information to give you an answer, All right? But probably one of the most useful features um, of the open air package is being able to, it has a function where it could write your, uh, rewrite your R code into Python. So if there is um, you know, one of your coworkers uh, codes in Python, and you want to share your code with them, and you know you're a R user. Uh, you could simply uh, run your uh, your R script through through this function, and it's going to make it a lot easier. Uh, it may not always be a hundred percent correct, but um, it's going to write most of the code for you. So if you go R underscore to underscore to Python and I have an R script that basically takes an Excel sheet with most multiple multiple tabs multiple sheets and then it combines it uh, into one data frame so I have it in the same uh, working directory and it's called uh, read multiple Excel sheets R, I mean dot R. All right, so we could run it. All right, it says Python code writing in progress. Hold on tight. All right, and it looks like you used uh, 488 tokens. That's quite a bit, quite a bit compared to asking it questions, right? So before we look at that Python script, so we could actually look to see, you know, who won the World Cup. We want to see how many tokens it, it uh, that took. We could switch this to count tokens. You see it's seven, and to rewrite that that Python the R R script into Python, we're looking at 488, which still means it's probably just a couple cents. Okay, so now we see the the Python script, and let's go see how well it did and if it ran. All right, here's our script. So let's go ahead and run it. All right, you can see that. It ran the code and it looks it looks good. All right, so that this was a uh, uh, my first tutorial on how to connect R to ChatGPT and uh, how to interact with it and uh, how to use it to uh, convert code from, uh, from R to Python. All right, thank you for watching.